Hi, welcome to Max Gamers. Today we will be continuing our walkthrough series for the Georgian Oil War campaign and the SU-25T Frogfoot on DCS World Steam Edition. Enjoy. The designation for this mission is ATO A.04.4. Our situation, locate enemy command and control platoon in the vicinity of Adslagera and destroy it. Our most dangerous threat on this list is the SA-18 IGLA manpad, but we should really uh, be ready to face threats not included on this list like the SA-9 and SA-13 heat-seeking missile launch vehicles. Taking a look at our objectives on the map, we find the HQ unit, which just has a bunch of command center trucks. The unit right next to it, however, has some more dangerous enemies. The MTLB with its machine gun and the SA-18 IGLA, two-man team with their Stinger missiles. Going to our aircraft, we will change our current loadout for only the laser-guided Vicar rockets and two 20-count pods of unguided fragmentation rockets to help destroy softer targets on missed attack runs. We will give our wingman the same loadout. This loadout is much lighter and more aerodynamic than the default option, which will definitely help us on our attack runs. Also, I am personally not very good at dropping unguided bombs, and I prefer to take out my targets from the safety of long distances. Next, I will set our AI wingman's options to increase their survivability and usefulness. Reaction to threat, evade fire. Use chaff and flares against fired missiles. RTB if out of all ammo. Rules of engagement, only designated targets. Formation, close trail. Here, I forgot we aren't using ECM, electronic countermeasures, but it won't matter. Now I'm going to plot our route to not fly directly over the enemy front line. Instead we will fly in a low and fast route along the coast over the water and attack the enemy headquarters from behind. On our attack path I am making sure to approach from a glancing angle so the wingman doesn't continue flying towards the front line and the egress path is at a larger angle so they don't cut the corner and miss visual contact of the target. I know our AI wingman Nikolai is very bad at evading Stinger missiles, so my plan is to cut from waypoint 2 straight over the waypoint 4 and destroy the Stinger soldiers before he arrives on his first attack run. On approach to the target, I will set the altitude to 400 feet above ground level and the speed to 330 knots. Not too high, not too low, and just the right approach speed as I found from testing. To designate which targets Nikolai needs to hit, we need to choose our ingress point. Select advanced waypoint options, add, start in route task, search then engage group, and then click on the primary mission target, which in this case is GHQ Prime. One final check and we will start the mission. So, spawning in now, looking over to our right shoulder, we can see our wingman Nikolai, and full throttle for the takeoff. Let's make sure to stick to the left side of the runway so Nikolai, who is currently going down the middle, doesn't run into us from the rear, and we'll rotate at 270 knots, no greater than 12 degrees nose up, to prevent a tail strike.
press G to raise the gear, and press F to raise the flaps one notch at 300 and a second notch at 330. And now we'll proceed to waypoint one. Here I'm going to send Nikolai out ahead of us on the continued flight path. I know he is going to fly a lot faster than us, but I do want him to arrive behind the enemy front lines as quickly as possible. And we will be arriving before him anyway because we are cutting across from the two different waypoints and taking out the Singer missiles before he arrives. Zinu, Now let's activate straight and level mode with the autopilot using left alt 3 and for a little bit of extra intel let's switch over to the F10 map to take a look at our enemy targets. So zooming in here on our primary objective, the GHQ, if we zoom out we can pan around and see that there are some extra units laid out in the battlefield that were not visible on the mission planning map or the F10 map so we'll need to be mindful of those extra uh, SA-18 IGLAs. And the SA-13 site near the airport, that will also need to be taken out before we arrive. Now we're entering the area of operations, so let's go ahead and turn on air to ground mode with the 7 key. And also bring up our TV display so we can prepare to engage that SA-13 site, which is currently our priority target. So now that we have the SA-13 site in our uh, camera sights, we can see that it is located behind some telephone poles, and in DCS, telephone poles are definitely enough to stop an air-to-ground missile. We'll have to maneuver slightly above and to the right of our camera angle in order for the missile to ride the laser beam all the way to the target without running into those lines. Also here I'm going to call Nikolai to anchor here so he does not get shot down by the Stinger missiles on his way in for his first gun run. Here remember to use right control bracket in order to adjust the window size to 5 for the Stinger missile soldiers. Удаление 3. Второй. Катапультируюсь. 
that announcement from Nikolai just means that he was shot down, and we will review at the end of the video what actually happened, but as of the current moment while flying this mission, I really had no idea why Nikolai was shot down. You can also see that we were just hit with a Stinger missile, but luckily it's a very small warhead and doesn't do a, a ton of damage. Um, because we lost lock, we're going to finish off the Stinger site with some unguided rockets, and if you were paying attention to the engine indicators on the middle of the cockpit console you will see that uh, one of our engines went to no power and then restarted itself. That is a cool feature of the cockpit that if you go to idle and then back to full power sometimes you have the chance to restart a lost engine. One thing I should mention about DCS is that whenever you have engine damage or an engine shutdown like the one that just happened here, usually there is an unknowing timer or a randomized timer that will cause the ignition to spontaneously explode after flying for enough time. And I guess depending on the seriousness of the damage to the engine, the time will come sooner than later. But really there is no way of knowing uh, when the engine will explode but it's just something you need to be conscious and aware of if you do have an engine shut down during a mission. Just try to get back to base as quick as possible or stay out and finish the mission. It is your call, but just be aware that that is something that can definitely happen. So let's go over a recap of how I normally do my uh, rocket runs with the Vickers laser guided rockets. First I like to go out to uh, maximum range which is usually greater than 5 nautical miles from the target. And I'll begin searching for my um, target. If it is a vehicle I'll need a window size of at least 10, um, I don't know if it's meters or pixels, but a window size of 10. Then you want to gain a lot of speed, um, not too much height, but just enough to see your target. And after you fire your first missile, try to slow down if you can with the air brakes um, because you want to linger in the air for as long as possible in order to have enough um, distance between you and your second target. And then once you lock on your second target, you want to continue slowing down as much as you can. And as soon as your second missile hits, make sure you go to full throttle, uh, get rid of those brakes so you can be as fast as possible, and turn away trying to maintain a speed of at least 500 kilometers per hour. Here you see I do it a little bit faster, which actually does give you a better turning radius of the frog foot. So if you want some good um, run-in turns, try to make them really fast. Now you may have noticed from that run that I wasn't slowing down after my first shot. In fact, I was actually maintaining a pretty high level of engine power. And the reason for that is because I have a damaged engine on the aircraft right now from that Stinger missile shot. And if you do drop your throttle low enough, the engine could lose its um, power and stop providing thrust, which is why if you do have a damaged engine, try to make sure your thrust um, remains above 50% at least so you don't have an in-flight shutdown because that just makes um, everything more difficult your plane will fly slower you'll have larger turn radius and you'll be more exposed to enemy fire uh, lingering in the air for longer On this rocket run, I was actually able to get three good shots in on enemy targets because of how slow I was flying, um, below 400 kilometers per hour, which is a little risky, 
because you don't have a lot of energy to escape if you come under threat. Um, but at this point I was a little confused because if you saw our last video on mission 1 after destroying the enemy objective, a message pops up in the top right corner saying mission success, well done, you've completed the uh, mission, you've destroyed the targets. But this time I wasn't so sure because on the F10 map it will tell you what group the targets belong to and at this point I was pretty sure that I had destroyed all of the GHQ units. So if you're ever in doubt, you can press the apostrophe key and it will bring up your score for the current mission. And as long as the result is 100, it doesn't matter what number your score is, you will receive 100 for that mission and I'm assuming the difference between your score and result uh, comes from the completion of the objective. Here you see me checking each unit to make sure they're not part of the main objective. And once I was satisfied, I got out of the F10 map and pressed apostrophe, which we will see now. Yep, here we are. And that means if we quit the mission, we will automatically be rewarded with a victory. So now to show you what happened to Nikolai, we're going to switch over to Tac View. So from this footage, it looks like I called Nikolai to anchor or hold position a little too late because when he did it here, at this point, he made a left large arcing turn which took him into the net of the Stinger missiles that we were about to destroy but had not destroyed yet and another group that I had not seen during um, my scouting and mission planning. So that is why he was shot down. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any comments or tips that can help me fly better at these campaign missions throughout our walkthrough series, because there are a lot of missions, uh, please leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to respond or reply. If you have any questions on anything I did, also send those as well. Um, like and subscribe if you like, and I will see you in the next video.